You just heard the CEO of Russia's um, direct investment fund, their sovereign fund, saying that this OPEC deal saved as many as 2 million U.S. jobs. Your take? Well, Hadley, I, I'm a little bit more skeptical. Uh, let's see what comes out this week. Uh, uh, I, I do think uh, that the markets are being a little bit more cautious, and I think the markets are right. Uh, you've got, you could have, uh, they, they confirmed 9.7 million barrels. Uh, you could have further agreements uh, and announcements by G20 members uh, tomorrow, the next day. Some say it could add up to as much as 18, 19 million barrels. Even at that, uh, the fall in April of demand is 30 million barrels. And so these three alpha males, Trump, Putin, and, uh, and the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, I'm not sure that uh, they have greater power than COVID-19. Uh, but that being said, they wanted to get something in before the markets opened to at least stabilize things uh, and to show that they're heading in the right direction before the storage bins fill up in about 30 days but from now. Fred, who won this round with regards to OPEC? Was it Mohammed bin Salman? Was it the president of Russia? Or was President Trump really the winner out of this? Well, the thing that's most interesting to me is the uh, President Trump's turnaround. On March 31st, he called the oil price decline uh, the greatest uh, tax cut the American consumer has ever had. He's always been highly, highly critical of OPEC. So what you've seen is Trump engaging, intervening, even setting a framework for the uh, the OPEC deal uh, this week and staying terribly engaged. So he's He's almost like an OPEC plus member himself this weekend. And he also has figured out two things. First of all, he needs prices that are low enough for the American consumer, but not so low that they're going to hurt his election chances. He needs Texas. He needs the 13 oil states. And so he was looking at uh, the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs. And so he's intervened. So I think uh, what I, I'm not sure who's going to win in the long term, but what you've really seen is Trump taking a much different approach to OPEC and a much different approach to oil prices. And I don't think that's going to change. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.